Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Eddie Sutton Show. I'm Dean Blevins and if you love basketball, which you do or you wouldn't be watching this program, it's a great time of year. March Madness is upon us, Coach. It is a great time. As I told our squad yesterday, uh, this is what every young person, as you start dribbling the ball uh, uh, as a youngster in junior high and high school, you want to get yourself to this position where we are today and be a part of a team going into the big dance. Uh, we put ourselves in that position from the time we started back on October 15th, this has been one of our goals, is to get to the NCAA tournament and uh, with a few lucky bounces, a few breaks, a few friendly calls, who's to say we can't be in Minneapolis? Right now our greatest concern is Georgia Southern and uh, from there either Tulane or uh, St. John's because those are the four teams that are in our immediate bracket. By winning those two games, uh, we can go on to Lexington, uh, to the Sweet 16, and of course our team did get to the Sweet 16 last year, but a great time of the year for uh, basketball, and uh, I think it's the most exciting and the greatest uh, sporting event we have in, in our country today. We've talked a lot during the course of the year about the peaks and valleys in college basketball. Your team goes 20-0, then February was not kind to you, but you're 5 of 7, losing only to a pretty good team in Kansas a couple of times. We believe we're back where we were uh, when we uh, put together that great uh, string. Uh, we lost to some quality teams in our league. We've lost seven times, but all good ball clubs have beaten us. Uh, we're back on a roll. Kansas beat us, but they are a good basketball team. They're deserving of the number one seed in the Midwest Regional. And we have a great program for you. Stay where you are. More highlights of the Big 8 tournament, and we'll talk about the NCAA tournament coming up next on the Eddie Sutton Show. Welcome back to the program. Coach, the Big 8 tournament sort of like the Super Bowl. So much hype and expectation, it's hard really to live up to that billing. I don't think the games were as good as what I thought they would be, but uh, certainly the intensity level on the part of the ball clubs was there, and the fans had a great time. I know all of our fans, uh, it's been a long while since we had gotten our team to the championship game, and we beat Kansas State and then Iowa State, and then were beaten by a good Kansas ball club. We pick up action here against Kansas State, and and you uh, can see Sean hit a three-pointer. They started in their zone. They thought uh, uh, it had worked pretty well at Manhattan the week before. But again, we are playing at the present time, in my opinion, better against zones than we are against man defense. And in this ball game, we just went out and completely took the game over early and knocked them out. And I told our squad, it's important when you're beating a team twice to go out early in the contest. Don't ever let them think they got a chance. And that's what our our ball club did. We jumped out, I think, 17 to four, and uh, we were never headed. And we won the ball game, 81-57. Got to play everyone. We shot over 50 percent from the field for the game. Only turned it over nine times. Byron led us in the ball game with 26 points. So, uh, good team effort. Best we played. Uh, if you uh, evaluate 40 minutes of basketball. Uh, the best game we played in a long while. And Byron Houston only plays 29 minutes, eight rebounds as well. Pokes 22 and three this year, holding teams under 70 points. And of course, as Coach mentioned, 57 points all Kansas State could muster. Well, they only shot 39 percent, and again, as it happens so often, our defense was the key. And the Cowboys win at 81-57. We sensed a little bit you know, that um, they didn't know what to do because we, we were hitting the outside shots and then we were banging the boys on them at first too. So I think they were a little bit confused, you know, but they still, they still played aggressive type defense, you know, through the first half and through the second half also. So to me, they didn't let up. They just think some of their shots wasn't falling and our shots were. And then it was on to Saturday's semifinal against Iowa State. Cowboys holding the Cyclones to 32% shooting. And you're going you're gonna to win most of your games when you hold them to 32%. That's for sure. And there's our defense getting a basket. And uh, Sean hit it. There's a, what we call an out-of-bounds play called Texas. We got that from Abe Lemons uh, when we were back in the Southwest Conference. If someone has a good play and we use it, we give them credit for it. And a uh, nice pass from Sean into Darwin. He hit the basket, then completed the three-point play by hitting the free throw. And this is the, the night after Iowa State had upset Missouri and uh, by virtue of doing that they clinched an NCAA bid and became the sixth Big 8 team to do that. Alexander there on the drive and the foul. Iowa State uh, spent so much energy in their victory over Missouri they weren't quite on top of their game like they had been the night before and when you play a game one evening and then have to come back the next afternoon 
uh, playing that second game, there was a, a, really a disadvantage, which uh, it was in our favor because we had played the, the opening game in uh, beating Kansas State. There's Cornell Hatcher with the ball. And Coach Cornell had six steals, third time this year he's had that happen. Just four Big 8 players have more steals than turnovers. That's a great statistic. It is a great statistic, and uh, there is the uh, play where Thigpen uh, hit Sean in the eye with a finger, and uh, all of us were very frightened, and I think Sean more than anyone else because he told me he thought he had ripped uh, his eyeball out because he said he could feel his finger all the way up in his, his head cavity. There's uh, Cornell ending the ball game, and we went at 69-60. to 60. And We'll talk more about Sean later. Well, I tell you what, now's probably a good time because you go into the next ball game against Kansas, you really need the outside shooting. Sean has the blurred vision. You only shoot one of 13 from three-point line. Well, we didn't make that decision to play Sean until just before the game because uh, we had had him uh, over at the hospital. The uh, ophthalmologist had checked him over, Dr. Cooper, our team physician. Uh, they felt like he could play, but he only had 20-40 vision in the eye. Uh, he wanted to play, and even if he didn't score, we felt like he would be a stabilizer. When you play Kansas, you better have a lot of good ball handlers on the court, and Sean's one of the best we have. He did play, but it did affect his outside shooting. He was only two out of eight, and as you mentioned, we were only one out of 13 from three-point range. But in the game with Kansas, even though we lost, uh, we performed quite well. It was a, a defensive struggle early, both teams playing tough man-to-man -man defense. We led 21 to 20 at halftime. They came out for three quarters of the ball game. We led, and then in the last seven or eight minutes, their bench really took over. That's where I really believe that uh, depth pays off when you have to play Friday, Saturday, and come back Sunday afternoon. Uh, our team, in many ways, played well enough to win, and they probably would have won against 90% of the teams in college basketball, but not in this game. The Kansas Kemper Jayhawks playing here, home away from home, some 40 to 50 miles, of course, from Lawrence and Byron Houston, who we will hear from a little bit later as the tournament MVP. He played well for you once again. These guys are big on the inside. They aren't uh, the number one seed in the Midwest region for, uh, with no good reason. They are a talented big ball club. Very talented. Uh, they have the best backcourt probably uh, in our league, although we have a good backcourt. But in Wallers and Jordan, they're excellent. But they do have some big people and the most depth of uh, anyone we played this year. And that's one reason uh, they'll have a chance to win the Midwest region because they can get back to Kemper for the regional tournament. And because of their depth, because of their style of play, uh, they coach the game very similar to what we do, play good, tough defense, take care of the ball, good shot selection, and play hard. And, and Kansas always does that. We didn't shoot as well in this game uh, as we had in the other uh, contest, but their defense probably had something to do with it. Byron was 5 out of 16, and uh, there's Sean getting the put back. But uh, there were several shots that he took that uh, he was gloated, uh, was guarded closely, maybe too closely, and got, didn't get any good calls in his favor. There's Adonis Jordan and the uh, record crowd at the tournament. We'll have a nice feature on the crowd at the uh, Kemper Arena witnessing this one. And really, Coach, it, it's not uh, this ball game in Iowa State were not the kinds of games that just flow smoothly. Both teams play that hard-nosed defense. The game in the second half was much uh, smoother, more points scored. The first half, it was like two heavyweights uh, going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Uh, as I mentioned, we didn't shoot the ball very well. 39%, they shot 50%. In the second half, they hit 72%, and that was really the difference. 66 57, uh, they win the championship for the first time since 86. And Coach Sutton and the Cowboys headed back over to their hotel to watch the NCAA pairings. You come out of number two seed, so uh, you, certainly, you and your club got a lot of respect by the NCAA selection committee. The tournament committee has great respect for the Big 8 and for our ball club, and we were a little surprised. We thought we might get a two seed, but for sure we would probably get a three seed. Uh, the tournament committee does an excellent job in distributing the teams across the country, although I think when you really analyze the four regionals, we probably are in the toughest one. And we will have more NCAA talk as the Eddie Sutton Show continues after this timeout. Play of the week, this week announced second team All-American Byron Houston, 35. And also MVP for the Big 8 tournament. I think that surprised a few people and Roy Williams was not real <laughs> pleased with it because he felt like the team that won 
one of the players should have come off of his ball club. But Byron played well enough in the tournament to be the MVP. I think he had 62 points and 31 rebounds. Uh, and I'm sure some of the sports writers also were very uh, sympathetic to him not being the MVP for the regular season. Of course, Peeler won that. Briefly, would you uh, was it fair for Byron to be MVP? For the tournament? Yes. Oh, I think so. I think uh, So Roy's he, wrong. No, I'm not <laughs> saying Roy's wrong because they could have chosen Walters or uh, any one of their other players. It is a little unusual and I think all of us were a little surprised, but I'm very elated that Byron was given that recognition because he's had a, a great uh, career here at Oklahoma State. Thirty second timeout, back for Coach's Corner after this. Welcome back to Coach's Corner, and we will look in just a moment at the Southeast region. Most experts calling it the toughest region. Two OSUs seated one and two. Well, I think it's the toughest because when you look at uh, if all the top seeds win, we would end up playing Arizona in the first round of the Sweet 16. And uh, Arizona probably, had they not lost both games on the West Coast to UCLA and Southern Cali last week, they would have been a two seed. If they win both of them, they'd have been a number one seed. So that's a tough draw. Let's take a look at uh, the first OSU would be Ohio State. They come in the top seed from the Big Ten. Coach, they are in Cincinnati taking on Mississippi Valley. And, of course, uh, one of our uh, sister institutions, Nebraska, playing Connecticut. They'll probably be a slight underdog, but they're certainly capable of beating Connecticut. Alabama went to the championship game of the SEC, and Kentucky beat them. They're playing Stanford. Uh, and North Carolina is playing much better. They went through a bad streak, but they're playing well and played well against Duke in the championship game of the ACC. In Atlanta, Oklahoma State, they're toward the bottom, the number two seed, taking on Georgia Southern. And Georgia Southern, a million to one shot? Is that what they say in the USA Today? <laughs> I don't know, but they're good <laughs> enough. They can beat us. And uh, I've seen enough film on them. they got some good athletes. They can run, jump, and shoot, hitting over 40% for the season from three-point range. And of course, if we win that game, we'll play Tulane, who has one style of play, a run and gun type of offense, where St. John's is more of a half court. So either game that uh, if we win, either one of those teams are will be tough. Uh, Arizona, I already mentioned uh, they're playing East Tennessee State. And Michigan, maybe the most talented team, but a, a group of young freshmen, uh, they're capable of beating anyone. And that team that they're playing, Temple. We played them last year, and John Cheney does a great job with the Owls. And what a matchup that would be, Arizona and Michigan there in the second round, a tremendous second round game. Coach, uh, your thoughts on a possible sleeper? Everybody likes to speculate. What's, uh, what does a guy that knows a lot about it say about a sleeper? I was on a, a radio show with Roy Kramer and Patino and Calipari and, and Nance, Jim Nance, <coughs> the other day, and we talked about the parity in college basketball. and. You saw Kansas in 88 go through, and they weren't that highly seeded, but they, were, they got the breaks of being able to play teams that had knocked off a top seed just ahead of them. I think you might see that this year. You might see some teams in Minneapolis that could be anywhere from a 4 to a 12 seed because there's really not that much difference between uh, those ball clubs. Uh, and if they get the right uh, breaks and if they're playing well, uh, they got a chance to be there. So I'm not going to say there's one Cinderella team. I'm going to say there's about 30 of them out there that uh, if they got hot and uh, if they didn't have to play a, a maybe one of the top uh, seeds, they, they would get knocked off, they could be there. You saw that when Villanova won the national championship. Uh, today, uh, I'm not saying Duke isn't the favorite because uh, Duke probably is the best team. But don't be surprised to see who shows up uh, in Minneapolis, uh, hopefully, It'll be the Cowboys. Stay with us. More talk of the NCAA tournament after this break on the Eddie Sutton Show. The Big 8 tournament. Some coaches believe that it has outlived its usefulness. I do not, and many others don't. But still, it's one of the biggest tournaments and biggest events during the course of the year. Kemper Arena is the home of an international hockey league team. In the past, it housed professional soccer and basketball. Kemper is also the home of the Big 8 postseason basketball tournament. Every March, fans from Des Moines to Boulder, from Lincoln to Norman, converge on the big white building to watch three days of wall-to-wall -wall basketball. More people want to see the games than there are tickets available. That's why people have to walk around with their fingers in the air. Each finger indicates the number of tickets needed. 
Some fans will go to any length to watch Big 8 basketball here in Kansas City. A friend of mine who goes to OSU or gets these tickets from OSU uh, couldn't get them this year, so we had to scout around and finally found some people from OU that would sell them to us <laughs> and end up getting them that way. Got two fives to work. Yeah. Right here, I've got five here. Here's a ten here, a two here. Another five. Another five. Thank you. A twenty dollar ticket for twenty five dollars was a good deal. Jim Marshall of Tulsa said he would have paid forty. Friday night, a record crowd of seventeen thousand seven hundred and nine watched Oklahoma State, Kansas State, and Missouri, Iowa State. That record was broken again Saturday when the Cowboys beat Iowa State and Kansas eliminated Oklahoma. This is the fifth year in a row the tournament has been sold out. I love selling, selling 17,000 seats uh, for every game. Uh, no, no question about it. The dollar portion of it drives the deal somewhat. But we also have the ego where we like to see uh, a lot of people in the stands. We like to see a full crowd. Not everybody likes the tournament in Kansas City because it gives Kansas, Kansas State, and Missouri a home court advantage. But it is unlikely the tournament will be moved anytime soon. It is a great tournament in a great setting, and it has become a great social event. And it looks like it will always be one of the toughest tickets in town. And it was a tough ticket. Rob Evans, one of your fine assistants, has become a leading candidate at Ole Miss. Well, I've always been blessed with great assistant coaches, and uh, my commitment to them, if they'll come and uh, do a great job for uh, our program, then we're certainly going to do everything to help them uh, if they want to go after a particular job. Uh, Rob has been contacted. Uh, he will interview with the University of Mississippi, but Rob has done an outstanding job for us here at Oklahoma State, and uh, right now his number one uh, responsibility is to Oklahoma State. But uh, after the season's over, if he wants to go after the Ole Miss job, then I'm going to do everything to help him. Coach, some quick questions about the NCAA tournament. Is it fair? A lot of people said, want to know about the Kansas number one seed in the Midwest with Kemper. Is it fair? Well, I think it's fair because, uh, you know, uh, it's not always it's going to be that way, but they have proven they're the best team in this part of the country, and you need to be rewarded on uh, your regular season play. Uh, I see nothing wrong with it, and uh, I would hope that the Kansas Jayhawks come back to Kemper and they win and they end up in Minneapolis because they are a part of our uh, – our conference and uh, I would hope all of our fans feel the same way. Dick Vitale and others have said that teams that don't win 50 percent of their conference games should not be in the NCAA. Your thoughts? I disagree with that because if you play in a strong conference like we played in this year it would have been possible to have a, a, a losing record in conference play and that's what you had uh, with Iowa State and yet Iowa State uh, is certainly one of the uh, best teams we have in college basketball so I'm opposed to that rule. I hope that uh, they never change it. Coach, you've had four teams in the NCAA tournaments more than any coach. What's the best team you've taken to an NCAA tournament? Well, this is my 15th trip with a, a ball club, the NCAA. I've had four different schools go to the NCAA. Uh, I'm not going to get into that now because I've had uh, some good teams that we didn't get to the Sweet 16. I've had other teams that uh, got there that maybe weren't as good. So this ball club, because of the seniors, because of the fact that uh, we – play good defense, we take care of the ball, we play hard. This team could go a long ways if we're fortunate. All right, let's take a look at the trading cards, Coach, that people can buy, the supporters of your program. There you see Byron in the middle and the coach and the rest of them. I hope our fans will buy these. They're very, very good. And to do so, Oklahoma State basketball, there you see the number 1-800-NIT-1992, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 o'clock. And, Coach, we wish you the very best. We'll be with you down in Atlanta, and go get them. Okay, thank you. For the Coach, I'm Dean Blevins. Thanks for watching. We will see you next week here on the Eddie Sutton Show.